Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wine Down with Kev. Another exciting episode that I cannot wait to bring to you. I want to say thank you to everybody, first off, for tuning in, taking time out of your busy day to watch Wine Down with Kev. Thank you for liking our page on IG. Thank you for subscribing to the YouTube channel. It's growing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. Most of all, I can't thank you enough for that and spreading these good conversations that we're having. Today, I am super excited. I am coming to you from my hometown, Wyandanche, New York. I am in an incredible location. I am in the Sir Shade Beauty Parlor. If you recognize this incredible ambiance, you may have noticed it from the background of a movie. Some of you might be watching Family Business. That is the movie set that we're on. This is also my home away from home. This is where I come to decompress once a week to get right, but that's not what I'm here for today. Today, I am here to record a podcast with my incredible brother from another mother that I've known for many, many years. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is so powerful. We're going to talk about a whole lot of things, but first... Brother Thurston O'Neill, introduce yourself to the people. What's going on, brother? Man? I'm How you doing, doing baby? You wonderful. good? I'm great. I'm yeah. doing wonderful. I'm blessed, bro. Uh, Thurston O'Neill, I am, uh, I'm going to start with what I think is most important. I am a husband. I am a father of four incredible daughters. Um, I'm a child of God. Uh, I am the CEO of Long Island Teamworks. It's a nonprofit organization. Uh, We focus on therapeutic and educational assistance, as well as prevention work. And I am also the owner of Thurston O'Neill and Associates, which is a uh, therapeutic company. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and we'll get into all of that as we go. I love your introduction because when you podcast with somebody you know, you never know where to start. (laughs) And you started first, God, family, then business. Absolutely. So I love that. Let's let's talk about your family. Mm-hmm. Shout the wife out. I yes. looked at the wife today uh-huh. online, and I noticed the letters behind her name. Yes. Esquire. Yes, absolutely. But talk uh, about it. Erica Edwards O'Neill. Um, we have been married 27 years, coming up on 27 years. Happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. Um, she is an attorney. Uh, she graduated actually from here on Long Island, uh, Toro. Outstanding. Um, so she knows a lot of people in the community. She is... Um, also mentored a lot of young attorneys that came through that system. Um, she is also a DEI expert. She has traveled all over the I world love it. doing uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion work and sustainability. And she works for a large organization in New York City right now. And she's powerful. She's, she's incredibly powerful. She's the love of my life. And she is my, like we talked about earlier, she's my first, uh, first line of defense when it comes to any work that I'm doing. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And super shout out. And we acknowledge, we acknowledge the, the Esquire, the attorney and oh, all that yes. she does to help others. Absolutely. And <clears throat> excuse me, hashtag girl dad, four girls, <laughs> one set of twins. Yep. And yep. you are not just a girl dad, you're a Spelman dad. I, I sure am. Let's talk about <laughs> very, that. very proud. So four daughters, uh, Brittany, Jada, Jaden, and Jordan. Um, Brittany uh, is a licensed social worker. Okay. Uh, Jada is down in Atlanta. She graduated from Syracuse. Okay. Um, Jaden, the first of the twins, she's she's older by one minute, and okay. she's proud of that. Let, let right. her have that. Right, right. That's, that's uh, her she's, right. At, she's at Morgan State. Okay. And then my youngest, Jordan, she's at Spelman. Okay. Um, they just went away last year. Okay. So we're we're uh, uh, empty nesters now. Ooh. Uh, and say that. so listen, it was a little hard for me though, bro. I know. Um, for the last, what, after, after COVID, you know, I would get up and drop them off to school every day. They right. wouldn't take the bus. I would drop them off. And that was sort of our thing. You know, that, right. that time right. in the car in the right. morning, right. those talks and right. all of that, that was special. Yes. So it was kind of hard for me when they left. Um, but we have settled in really nicely to uh, empty nest hood, bro. It's, it's really nice. You, you've made the adjustment. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. I've done the drop off. I've shed my man uh-huh. tears. Yeah, exactly. That, that's all right. Exactly. You drop exactly. them off. You cry a little bit. Yes. And then yes. you get home and it's all good. And you settle in. You, you settle in, You bro. settle in. You settle yeah. in. So I, I got to tap into Spellman for a minute mm-hmm. because she's down there. Not only is she attending, 
But she's carrying the family business. She's in the Glee Club. Oh, what? That was one of the first things she did when she got there. Okay. So let me let me explain to you with Jordan. We were on, they took me on a, a cruise for my 50th uh, birthday, right? Nice. So all the girls. Nice. All the girls and me. And um, so we're enjoying ourselves and it's a karaoke bar. Okay. Right? Okay. And so, and so this is the thing. I don't really go to karaoke bars a lot. You don't want to hurt nobody? Uh, listen, I feel it's sort of unfair. And that, <laughs> listen, I'm not bigging myself up, okay. but it feels a little weird for me, right? Okay. But we're in the karaoke bar. We're having a fun time, everybody. And she gets up. And this is, my, this is the first time. She gets up, and she goes up there with full confidence, bro. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go sing a song. Okay. And she belts it out. Like, I was blown away. And so she's into theater. She's into... Um, singing and Broadway and all of that. We actually just went to see a, a play together, just me and her, special nice. day, uh, to see a play on Broadway a couple of weeks ago. But this is what she does. As soon as she got on campus at Spelman, reached out to people like Glee. Of course, you have to try out. Okay. She tries out. She gets in. And, you know, she's, like you said, she's holding down the fa- part of the, the family thing. business. All right, all right. Yeah. so I, it's, I have an obligation not to leave my audience hanging. <laughs> what did she rock at that karaoke? What did oh, she go man. with? So, listen, she, she did, I think she did a Beyonce song. Okay. I forget exactly which one it was. But, I mean, with full confidence, bro, That's like hard. no nervousness at all. She That's just, hard. She rocked it. Yo. That's hard. Yeah, she did her thing. She That's hard to thing. do. Congratulations. Yeah. So, yeah. before we get into the business business, I want mm-hmm. to talk about this this family business and you being O'Neal, mm-hmm. youngest of nine. nine. Now, youngest I have, nine. I've probably done this wrong in the past. I talked to um, Ronnie Griffin, uh-huh. Rakim's older brother, mm-hmm. and I've said to him, that they are the first family of music mm-hmm. and wine dance. And I thought about that coming here today. I'm like, <laughs> the O'Neill family, the O'Neill family. Y'all got some game. Yeah, man. Yeah, listen. Y'all got, so talk about your, uh, talk about the O'Neill family, then we'll come to you. Talk about the sing, Sangers, uh-huh. S-A-N-G-A, Sangers yes. in the O'Neill yes. family. So, then we'll get to your achievements. So this is the thing, man. Um, like, like you said, uh, Youngest of nine. Okay. Six older sisters. Yes. Two older brothers. Yes. Now, my brother, Ray, he passed away some years ago. Mm-hmm. Ray was the singer of the Okay. Family. Ray, mm. I mean, and we're a church family, you know. Yes, yes, My, yes, my yes. first memories, my first actual memories is being in the church, seeing my father up on the pulpit preaching. Okay. First memory that I could ever remember. And um, so we've been in church our entire life. Okay. Of course, church, okay. you sing. Yes. My brother Ray would tear the church Are down. Are you serious? Bro, tear it down. Kind of singing that make you want to come to church even yes, when you play exactly, on the sleeping okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So uh, my brother Ray, of course, my sister Marianne, everybody calls her Pinky. Yes. She's a beast, bro. Yes. Voice incredible. And uh, I'm the last of the nine and, you know, just carrying that tradition along. And, um, you know, I, after high school, and we could get a little bit into this, not to take up too much time, but after high school, um, I thought I was going to go to college. I went to college for one semester. Before, okay. And I stopped. And then there was a, a teacher that I met in Amityville Junior High School, ninth grade, Amityville. Mr. Uh, C. Everett Collins. Yes. Mr. C, let's talk about it. Oh, my him. goodness. Let's talk about it. Uh, listen, I talk about this a lot. Um, I really, I credit him with saving my life, bro. Is that right? I really do. Cause he saw me, he saw something in me that, um, no one really had tapped into that at that time. Okay. Of course we sing, we sing in church and all of that, but he actually saw something more in me and called it out. That's right. It. He called it out. So now I, I bounced around in schools a lot. I, I went to wine dance from kindergarten to six. Okay. Seventh grade, I was in Central Iceland. Okay. Eighth grade, I was in Copay. Okay. Ninth grade, I was in Amityville. Wow. Tenth grade, I was in a private school in Texas. Okay. And then I came back 11th to 12th grade at Wine Dance. Okay. Um, so it was a lot of movement, and I didn't know what was going That's on. That's hard yeah. for a young man oh because gosh. growing up in Wine Dance, those formative years, K to six, we test each other. 100%. Not academically. No. I no. want to know if you have hands and whether you belong exactly. here. Exactly, bro. Okay. Exactly. So... Move, bouncing around, always being the new guy. Um, that was tough, bro. Yeah. That was tough. And this is why I say that he saved. So the way that I dealt with that was, uh, and my father passed away when I was 11 years old. Oh my God. So, and that was right around the time we started moving. Right. 
So what did I do? How did I manage? I started smoking weed. I yep. in seventh grade. Yes. I <laughs> I stole a joint out of one of my family members' uh, purse. There it is. Took it to school. There it is. That was the easiest way for me to connect with other people. Right. Um, it, that was a, uh, the easiest way for me to sort of mute the feelings that I was, I didn't even know it at the time. Wow. It was just something that we right. did, right? right? Smoked all through high school. But the reason I said it was Mr. C that saved my life, because I was going hard. He called me after graduation. He was putting together this group, connected we, with um, uh, Pitt Collins from the group Surface. Okay. He took us to... Um, uh, J Records, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, he took us to J Records to do a live uh, audition. We sang a cappella for Clive Davis. Whoa! And uh, it, we got signed to a production deal. Um, but the reason I say it was Mr. Collins that saved me because Mr. Collins, one of his things was there's not going to be any drug use in this group. If you use drugs, if you're smoking and all that, you can't be a part of this, right? And that was the impetus for me Stopping right. and focusing on my gift, the gift that God had given me. To get back to singing, and for anybody who missed the name Clive Davis, mm. this is the Clive Davis, Arista Records. Absolutely. Man credit with finding Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, absolutely. Help me with my timing. It should be the exact same time. Uh-huh, yeah. The time you're getting signed, Whitney's getting signed. So Whitney was out already. Um, so our time was right around when they were pushing... Not necessarily on the same label because we moved from Arista to Warner Brothers, but it was around uh, Brandy, um, a couple of other groups. I think it was like Jodeci and stuff like that, right? Ooh. So uh, it was around that time. And listen, this gave me a chance to travel around the world, to work with a lot of different producers, uh, hone my songwriting skills, right? But it was all because... A ninth grade teacher. Now, keep in mind, I had left Amityville and moved on to all these other schools. And there was years in between. Right. But when he was putting this together, he remembered me. My God. And gave and found me because he didn't have my number. He found me, called me. Thurston, I want you to be a part of this group. Just out the blue. And at that time, I was I was into a lot of nonsense. I, mean, I understand. And it helped me to clean up my life. Yes. Get my life back together. Traveled. You know, met a lot of people. Made some money. And then uh, I settled in. T- and that's where I really took control of this gift, the singing and the songwriting. Yes. Yeah. So, so let's talk. Let's talk about what you've done with that gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have some accolades. I did some research to prepare for this. <laughs> but I dare not attempt to do it wrong. So let's talk about, hit me with the highlights of your accolades and achievements in the music business. So I, <clears throat> I pride myself in being a songwriter. Now this is, this is something that a lot of people probably will not fully understand. I've sang on a lot of different stages in yes. front of a lot of people. But even to this day, I get stage fright. Even to this day, wow. bro, uh, heart starts pumping. Um, and I'm fully confident in my skills and abilities. There's no Absolutely. doubt about it. Right. None. But I still get that um, anxiety about yes. stepping in front of people. Okay. Right. So, listen, we've worked with Kashif. Um, of course. God bless the dead. Um, we've worked, of course, Pitt Connolly. Um, you know, they've they've had a string of number one hits and billboard hits and all of that. Um, and he helped me hone my skills as a songwriter and, and such. We've traveled all around the country. We've traveled out of the country doing so. Now, this was early 20s, mid 20s that we traveled around. But uh, we, when we were going to record our album, and I'm going to sort of transition here. We were in Williamsburg, Virginia. Okay. We had bought a house there, had a full studio. So we moved down there. Uh, we were on, this is when we were with Clive Davis. And they gave us a production deal. We're down there. We're recording. We're writing songs. We get to write all of our own songs. Wow. They didn't farm it out to anyone else. We get to write it. Wonderful material. Um, and this is where I met Erica. Erica had okay. just recently graduated from William and Mary College. Timing. Yes, timing, bro. I'm timing. telling you, there's no way I would have wound up in Williamsburg, right. Virginia. Right. right. There's no other reason. I meet her. We. Uh, <laughs> We meet in the studio. She comes to the studio. I'm recording. She's out there. I finish what I'm doing. I come out and we sit next to the uh, to the board, and 
We talked for like three hours straight, bro. Like we were old friends. I love it. And so our history's lined up. She comes from a Pentecostal church. I come from a Pentecostal church. We're sharing stories. She, she's the youngest of six. I'm the youngest of nine. Nice. She has three older brothers. So she, and she's a girl dad. Nice. Um, so we just connected and, and we've been together ever since, bro. So music brought me to her. So that's the highlight of my music career, that's, bro. It, but you know what? <laughs> that, that outcome is better than any zeros you can add to 100%, this conversation. 100%, bro. So that is, a, that is the most beautiful transition yeah. and a wonderful story that's still going strong. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of transition, mm -hmm. you are in transition. You yes. just left a wonderful high-level position yep. as an AVP mm -hmm. to step out here in this entrepreneurial world yeah. and do your own thing. Let's yeah. talk about it. So... Um, <laughs> I like you said, I my trajectory to where I am now took on a lot of different forms. Okay. Like I said, I went to school, I did one semester and then I dropped out and I started traveling around and, and life took me a lot of places. Which is the travel I think is the best education it, in the world. It go really ahead. is, man. It really is. You meet a lot of people, you learn how to deal with a lot of people. Um, but I went back to school late. And I'll tell you, this is the power of family and togetherness because in essence, I started, I was racing my oldest daughter. Like I wanted to graduate college before she did. Okay. I wanted to get my master's degree before she did. Yes, right? yes. Because education is a big part of our family. That's it. But I hadn't done that. I got right? it. I go back to school, I start part-time, um, then I get back into full-time and I get my undergraduate degree, I go, to uh, Liberty University to get my uh, marriage and family therapist graduate degree. Yes. Uh, and I did beat her. I graduated yes. before her, right? So I got fast. my graduate degree before her. And then, so that led me to how I wound up at FCA is I did my internship and my practicum at Hempstead High School okay. in the team center. Ooh. Some of the greatest training I could get under Dr. Kirkland Vaughn and under Dr. Uh, Regina Edgeworth, right? Excellent. They ran the team center. They took me in, I learned a lot there. And then, um, then it was just a matter of getting my hours and taking my licensing test. But in the meantime, I started working for FCA. Okay. I do some youth programming. I did youth programming in uh, Long Beach at the Long Beach Martin Luther King Center. Um, uh, and uh, it was called Long Beach Ladder. So it was teaching young people okay. how to build up themselves to self-sufficiency, okay. right? Did that for a year, uh, that program ends. I, I move around a little bit. I actually left there, went to Adelphi's uh, uh, Institute for Parenting for like a year and a half. Excellent. Ran a program there with the Nassau County DA's office. Then I was called back to, asked to be the director of the Hempstead Prevention Coalition. Thank God. Oasis was starting this coalition. They didn't really know how it was going to take off in Hempstead, um, but uh, they brought me in. And I have to say, my my uh, my girl Donna Raphael. Okay. She was a, a mainstay in the community. She took me around to all of these different people, introduced me, and then it was on me to nurture the relationships, yes. to build up the relationship, and bring everybody together. Yes. It went beautifully. So we did a, a lot of good work there. I elevated. I got. Uh, elevated to a um, AVP role, okay. and I did that for a couple of years. And then I was called, uh, I got my licensing, I got my licensure for, as a licensed marriage and family therapist. You need that. That helped me to launch out to start that. But I've always had Long Island uh, Team Works on the back burner. Established in 2016, but wasn't doing a lot of work with it, a nonprofit. And Team stands for Therapeutic and educational assistance model, right? I love it. So focusing on therapy, educational assistance, and now because I did the prevention work uh, with the large organization, focusing on that as well. Yes. I uh, did a lot of that in Hempstead. Now looking to transition to out here, my hometown, yes. the wine dance, yes. right? The transition wasn't easy though, bro. No. Now, and the hardest part, I'm telling you, Kev, the hardest part was stepping out on faith. Yes. And believing that God is going to do and yes. put into place everything he needs to put yes. in. Yes. And also not walking away with any type of resentment or anything like that. But 
you know, the way you enter a thing is the way it's going to be established. Absolutely. Right? So you don't want to bring that negative energy no. with you. You want to bring positive energy. Yes. And the fact that um, I'm very intentional about protecting relationships. Yes. Right. It's important. When I connect with someone, I want to be a man of my word. Yes. Does that mean that you always do it? Absolutely not. We all make <laughs> mistakes. But the fact that I have connected with people and I know people in, in wine, and wine dancers always held me down. Even though I've traveled and come yes. back, yes. wine dancers are my people. Of course. Right? So looking to really establish that prevention and therapeutic uh, model here in wine dance, working with the schools, working with the different organizations around. Um, and and that's that's been the transition and it's really starting to take off. So 2024, you're going to see a lot more from us. I love it. I love it. So let, let's, let's go all the way into the conversation mm -hmm. we're not supposed to have. Uh-huh. Thirsting amongst us, mm -hmm. amongst men, uh -huh. amongst black men, yes, strong men, yep, athletes, entertainers. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to talk about mental health. <laughs> that is what our society has. That's how we've been trained, right? Be strong, even to the, the smallest little minutia of um, toughen up, be a man. You're telling that to a little kid. No, they deserve to be boys. They yes. deserve to be children. Yes. Um, one of the things I share a lot is, you know, we have this saying in our and it's not only in our community you know children should be seen and not heard right very that bad message the, that passed to us oh my god and we keep it going and we keep it going yes. bro. and it's the very opposite of what should happen yes children should be heard yes they should and not only for their well-being but for us also yes. you learn so much from young people man. yes so um we have a, a a youth engagement model that we use right uh it's called the the uh, 3EC model. Engage, uh, empower, educate, and celebrate. Yes. You engage young people by the, the environment that you create for them to come into. Right? Yes. Um, you empower them by asking them what they want, what yes. they need, what they need to see change in their community. Not me forcing... No. Uh, not me forcing my program or nope. them. No. No, nope. no, nope. no. Nope. You have to ask them. Yes. And then... Once they tell you what they need, then you uh, you bring in the resources and everything yes. that they need to make it happen. Yes. And you and of course you educate them. The model is uh, I got this from Kavka. It's youth led and adult guided programming. I love that. Youth led. I love and it. adult guided. I love it because we can't force our childhoods on them. Our children are dealing with way access to way more information mm -hmm. than we ever had. Yep. They have their own ideas. They see the world differently and we should listen twice as much as we speak. 100%. No doubt about it. And the thing is you learn so much from them. Oh, yes. You learn so much from them. Yes. So, instead of forcing what we want to see, what we think is is should be done, Listen to them. And listen, like you said, they have access to more information. They're brilliant. Yes. They really are smart, but they still need guidance. Of We're course. not saying let them go and no, run no, wild. No, 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 You guide them. Yes. But you have to build relationship with them first. Yes. Like, I, and listen, I know a lot of people have issue with uh, young men walking around with their pants sacking. Okay. Right? Okay. I okay. understand it. I understand it. But if I don't know a young man, and I just walk up to him and be like, man, pull your pants up. Wrong place to start. Who, who am I to tell him to pull his... I don't know anything about nothing, him. Nothing. Who am I to tell him that? You got to build relationship yes. with young people. Yes. And then when they respect you, yeah, you can tell them what you need to yeah, tell yeah, them. Yeah. But you can't just come off top saying, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, you're doing no, this wrong. Man, no. First of all, you're going to get cursed out. No. <laughs> I, would say that, I would say the opposite is true. I would say... Networking, connecting with young people is the mm -hmm. same as networking and connecting in business. First thing I'm going to do is find a compliment. Man, you look sharp. Exactly. I love the jacket. Exactly. I love the mock. I love the, the combination. Right. Find something positive about them and connect with them. And our young people have experienced so much disappoint mm -hmm. disappointment. They're waiting for you to let them down. Right. So you have to show up and you have to show up yeah. consistently over and over because they've been let down and they're waiting for you and I to do the same thing. So... Let, let's stay in this conversation mm -hmm. that we're not supposed to have. Mm -hmm. We're a couple of years removed from the pandemic. Uh -huh. You and I had conversations because the yep. whole world was having a hard time. Yes. And we needed therapy. Mm -hmm. Now, again, God-fearing, God-fearing, uh -huh. church-going man, church-going man. But in our community, 
Oftentimes therapy means talk to the pastor and the pastor may not be therapeutically trained like you. No, no. Um, some, some pastors are not equipped with very practical training that, that may be needed. Does that mean that as a therapist, I say, throw prayer out? No, no, of course no, not. no, 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 no. Of course not. Listen, I was born and raised in the church, man. Yes. I, I tell her all the time. It's like I was birthed on the front pew. <laughs> I've been in church my entire life, man. I love God. I trust God. But I also understand that he puts things in place for us. Many times we disregard the help that he sent us because it is not packaged in a spiritual box. Right. 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 And when you are so caught up in being spiritual, uh, my pastor says, so, so heavenly mind that, that, that you know, earthly, good. no earthly good right? at all. You have to look around you, see how God has designed this for us. So in addition to prayer, and I have nothing against talking to the pastor, but understand what the pastor's strengths are right. and very well equipped pastors actually should have just like a lot of these other organizations have a referral list yes. of people that yes. they trust yes. that they can send a couple to a young man to that's struggling. Right. Um, because everything is not handled through just pray about it. You can't just pray about it. You Prayer with our works is dead. And if you dead. think about our primary doctor, mm -hmm. if we have a specialized issue, he has the list of the specialists to refer us to. So exactly. I just I just love the fact that you're in this space because we need these conversations right now. Yes. Um, I scroll through your page. You're talking about some difficult conversations mm -hmm. that our young people are dealing with. I saw you talk about premarital counsel uh -huh. counseling. You're talking about suicide prevention yes. and awareness. Mm -hmm. I heard a startling stat this morning that of the people that died due to gun violence, a large percentage of that is due to suicide. Oh, absolutely. Yes, a, a very large percentage. And so in the work that I'd done previously, working with uh, gun prevention programs, uh, New York State uh, Office of uh, Justice, um, you know, snug programs. We have a yes. snug program right here in, yes, in White Dance, absolutely. right? Uh, and connecting with them, elevating their voices in the community, uh, letting people and normalizing these conversations. Yes, normal, normal. Be because listen, you know the other the other negative uh, thing that we bring into our from our families is don't tell nobody what's happening in yes. this house. Yes, right. Yes, it's ridiculous. Yes. So so that child is walking around holding on to this anxiety. And it's affecting it. It's going to come out somehow. Well, it, it, we see how it comes out every day. It manifests itself. Uh, you talked about in your mm -hmm. own youth. Yep. You know, the yep. smoke is the first thing we're introduced Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Then Absolutely. alcohol and then all the other coping techniques. It's yeah. all that we have. And what does it come down to? I'm going through something. Yep. It's bottled up. Uh-huh. I want to talk about it. But the only people I have to talk <laughs> about are the people I'm getting high with. Exactly. Exactly. And the family doesn't want to talk about it. Um, you don't want to put your family's business in the streets. Mm -hmm. So that's where really good therapists come in. Yes. As a therapist, what you bring into my office stays between you and Beautiful. I. I help you navigate it. Now, as a therapist, I am not a person that's giving out directives and say, go do this, go do this. But I'm walking alongside you. Yes. As you, uh, first of all, you go back and sort of like, give yourself the space to feel the emotions that's attached to these traumas and everything that you've gone through. And then as you, uh, as you discover new things, new feelings, and I'm there as a non-judgmental, mm -hmm. supportive voice mm -hmm. that's gonna help you navigate it and ask questions. Okay, this is how you're feeling about it. How are we going to go about, how are you going to go about putting the things in place that you need, yes. right? And how can I help you? How can I refer you also, but also just give you the space to talk about it? Yes. So Kev, I, we, we're doing this men's mental health initiative. And, you know, I started going out and talking to men. Again, it's about removing the stigma yes. and normalizing the conversation. Yes. I can tell you right now, the majority of my clients are black men or Thank men God. of color, I should say. Thank God. Because I, I think society says it doesn't matter what you do. 
men of color are not coming into therapy. No. That's not true. We don't accept that. That's not true. I have this big thing about um, mandating therapy, right? So with the with the new bail changes and stuff, okay. there's less mandating of services, right? And it sort of puts the onus on us as therapists to, instead of holding this over their head, like, if you don't come in, I'm going to tell the court. Right, right, right. right. How about we focus on creating an environment that they want to come back that to? That you want to. You want, they to, want to come back to. Like a friend. The therapist should be, I want to talk to a friend that yes. I can have this conversation mm-hmm. with because me and you are just talking right. and there's benefit and value in the conversation. Yes. And when yes. you do that, I'm going to seek you out. Exactly. I'm going exactly. to seek you out. So yes. we are, um, I'm definitely with you and mm-hmm. helping change the narrative. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We see it. We need to talk about it. When I think about um, where your story began, mm-hmm. the the things that happened that took you to your wayward experiences, uh-huh. which turns out to be a blessing in your ability to re- relate to these young kids. Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've coached enough things on the field, mm-hmm. and now instead of moving the ball one more inch down the field, we need to focus on the six inches of real estate wow. in our head mm-hmm. and give us some more coping techniques, right. um, especially as we go from athlete to parent, yep. to coach, and mm-hmm. to relationships. Yeah. All these techniques and skills you have are needed or we expect it of our young people, but no one has ever coached them up right. with techniques. So going back, we'll begin to uh, come, in, come into a close. Mm-hmm. At a young age, we're taught, Thurston, you stepped on your shoes. What you gonna do? Oh, dude. dude. <laughs> come on, you have to, Come on. And we, you know, and you, they fresh and clean. Yes, they nice. You yes. stepped out. And you careful even how you walk in. Yes. If somebody got the nerve to come and step on your shoe. Dude, that's what, that's how we grew up. And those are, and we never developed or had the coaching conversation to say, Thurston, you, you probably didn't mean nothing, but right. I right. just got that's these. Okay. They mean a lot. Right. And how to use our, our words and not our hands. So, I'm excited for what you're doing. Uh, my podcast is called Wind Down with Kev, which mm-hmm. is a chance to relax. Mm-hmm. And this season, I've added a tagline called The Dream Chaser Podcast. Mm. So I want you to give a word of encouragement to anybody that's watching this, that's mm-hmm. chasing a dream. Maybe they're in career and mm-hmm. transition. They've worked hard enough on their side hustle and they're ready to make it a legitimate business. I want you to close out and give some encouraging words to them. Yeah. So before we close. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I'll say this, man. This has been I can speak from my own personal experience. Yes. Right. It's easy for us to get caught up in uh, being comfortable. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. You got. A paycheck that comes every two weeks. Yes. You know exactly how much it's going to be. Yes. You know how it supports your family. Yes. Um, and I fully understand that everybody can't just step away from that. Yes. I get it. Yes. But um, I was watching something online today, and someone was saying, like, we give a lot of our time to a nine, nine to five. Yes. We're building up someone else's business or reputation or whatever. And we have to be able to take time out of our day, whatever it is, I don't care if it starts with five, 10 minutes to focus on what your dream is, right? right? You wanna chase a dream, focus on that. Make an exit plan, right? Especially yes. for people of color. Yes. Because we grow up with the thought of, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna buy me a home, uh, I'm gonna try to support my children, and and that's all we dream of. It's but tough. there's so much more. Yes. Okay? And, and I'll tell you this, the more, ex, the more exposure you have, the more you realize that there's so much out there for us to get. Man, There's so much more than a modest little home. Yes. And it's nothing wrong nothing with wrong that with at that. Nothing all. Wrong with it. Nothing wrong right? with it. But there's so much more that we all have access to. Yes. We all have the same amount of time in the day. Yes. Right? We have the same access to education. Even if it's not the absolute best education, it's education. It's education, bro. So, my my mindset is prepare yourself to step out. Now, I had to have uh, I wouldn't say a difficult conversation, but I had I think I made it more difficult in my head. Yes. Because as I'm preparing to step away, I got to come to Erica and be like, um, yes. so Erica, this is <laughs> what uh, this is what I feel God is leading me to do. Yes. And you know, waiting for her response. But as always, fully supportive. Of course. If it's what God has called me to do and and she has absolute confidence in me as a man, as a 
uh, person that she can count on. So she's behind me 100%. That was good for me. That, that, right? that gives you the fight that. ultimate peace of mind. Let me share with you. As a mm-hmm. man who's been married 10 more years uh-huh. than you, yep. that's everything and every idea. How do you have the conversation? I'm chasing a dream that may touch our finances for a season. Yep. But I'm yep. going to come through it. Yes. Are absolutely. you with me? Yes. And when she says yes, the rest of it opens. Oh, my goodness. Then you could take a deep breath. And now you can focus. Yes. But it also calls you to focus, right? Oh, you, you can't to play around with it now. Yeah, yeah, no. Right? She, she didn't bet on you to lose. Exactly. She's not a gambler. So she's on board, but that means, okay, now my focus have to be, I really have to focus in on how this looks, who, who do I collaborate with. One of my things, because I moved around so much, I got stuck in this thing where I'll just do it myself. I do, I'll do it on my own. You can't do it no, on your own, No, no, bro. no, 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 no. You, it doesn't happen without a, a team. A team. It doesn't happen without a team. Yeah. And then sometimes people think they limit team because I have X amount of dollars coming in, expenses. Right. I can't pay anybody. But you have people that are with you that you yes. can tap into that yes. can be resources until the revenue is there. And so this is, this is what I, I really want to share. I know we're winding down. But so the concept behind Long Island Teamworks is just that, mm-hmm. right? We are looking to, like I did in Hempstead, building the Hempstead Prevention Coalition. The coalition is made up of people from all different sectors of community, yes. all 12 sectors. That's parents, that's students, that's uh, government agencies, that's law enforcement, that's media, that is um, uh, 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 youth services uh, providers, right? Everyone that you can imagine, that's local businesses, yes. that's the civic organizations, yes. right? They come together, they talk about what the community needs. We've worked in silos for so long, Kev. And coalitions doesn't take away from what you do as an individual organization, but it elevates it because you're coming alongside other people in the community. And that's what we're looking to build right here in Windeth. I don't know if we have that. I don't think we have that. You are, um, you are what I look for in my guests. You are an FOD, you're first only and you're different. Mm-hmm. You don't have to check with the next therapist that's providing your services because they do not exist yet. Right. So you're first, <laughs> you're only, and you're different. So tell the people where they can find out about Only Therapy, where they can find you online, where they yep. can follow you. Absolutely. And get some of this good information that you dropped on this podcast. So you can find uh, all content uh, under... O'Neill Therapy. So the website for the therapeutic portion is O'Neill Therapy. That's Thurston O'Neill and Associates. That's our website. O'Neill, and that's O N E A L. That's spelled the correct way, not the O N E I L L. It's O N E A L, like Shaquille O'Neal. O'NeillTherapy.com. And Long Island Teamworks is L I Teamworks.org because we're a nonprofit. And you could go on there and see all of our information, all what we do. That's how you can connect with us. You can send emails. We always get right back to our uh, community. And we are really starting to look for partners. So you're going to get a, a letter in the mail asking you to sign on as a partner. It doesn't call for you to add any money, but your expertise is so much more valuable than any type of a donation that you can give. Yes. That is the most valuable thing. Connecting with people, bringing their expertise to the table, and and I know that we have everything that we need in the community to yes. make it happen. Yes, we do. There's no doubt about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Thurston O'Neill. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very, very much. Kev, thank you, bro. Thank you.